What is up ladies and gentlemen, CJ the Cheese DJ here and we are back with another Warhammer video for you guys today and it is us, the High Elves versus the Vampires. Now guys, you can currently see here we have a very small force but a very expensive force at that. So our front line, we've got a single group of Spearmen, two groups of the White Lions of Trace, we've also got two Lothan Sea Guards in the second flanks and a Sisters of Avalon in the rear. We also have Alariel the Radiant on her horse. In hindsight, probably should have put her on the pigeon. Would have been a little bit better in terms of uh, protecting her. And we also have a handmaiden of the Ever Queen on the horse. Just in case they decided to bring any large foes such as dragons and the terror geists. We also have in the skies a flamefire spenix and a sun dragon. As well we've got two groups of the Ilarian reavers, one hidden over here and another hidden over here. Pretty much just to pop out of the forest in case he had any cavalry and he does. Now as for my opponent, he's got two groups of direwolves back here and a group of the hex race. We didn't actually see these guys, so you are seeing the replay. So yeah, we didn't actually see those guys back there. He's also got a group of the black knights with the lancers. And I think that's his only cavalry group. Yes, it is. He also has a black coach, uh, a lot of graveguard and skeleton warriors. Uh, two groups of skeleton warriors, I think. Three groups of skeleton warriors and then a bunch of zombies as his front line just to serve as chaff. He also has two crypt horrors as well and a vampire lord up on the beautiful zombie dragon. So guys, without further ado, let's get this match underway and see how it plays out. So we're pretty much just chilling here. We have the ranged advantage, so we're like, let's just wait for him to come to us. You know, there's not really any pressure he can apply to us. We do send our Alarian Reavers out to intercept the Black Knights, kind of just to keep them busy for a bit so they don't make their way around here on the flanks and get into our archers. So we do kind of get a recharge off that and you can see that leadership starts plummeting right there. But while we're sitting here, we're like, all right, let's make things a little bit interesting. Let's send the Phoenix in. Phoenix has um, the, I, I'm going to call it the bomb run. So pretty much what it has the ability to do is drop fire bombs on the enemy. So we're like, let's go do a bo bit of a bombing run. Drop that on some of the enemies. The Alarian Reavers over here were handling the Black Knights pretty well. But you can see here, here comes the Phoenix bringing in some of its bombs. And you can see, it, there you go. That's one of the bombs that drops. So we're like, let's just lay those down the front line. But uh, we slightly realized a little bit too late that we're just kind of targeting zombies, which in hindsight, we probably should have been going after these guys. We do pop our Sun Dragon's Breath Attack onto the uh, Crypt Horrors as well, because might as well get the cooldown going. Now, we also forgot to mention he does have a Banshee over here. So yeah, he does send the Zombie Dragon after us, but our Phoenix is slightly faster, I believe. 120 speed against 90, yeah, so we are going to be able to outrun him, and it's at this stage that I'm like, alright, let's start targeting the Grave Guard, we'll start bombing these guys and his back line, because the zombies are going to be pretty easy, but you can see here, our Larian Reavers do start to uh, break, and they are routed off by the Black Knights, did a decent amount of damage to them, I just kind of wanted them to intercept them, keep them busy, keep them off our backs, and you can see here, we do send our Sun Dragon in after the Vampire Lord, Kind of just to feign it and get him off our Phoenix because our Dragon is the more valuable target. We do have a little bit more speed on our Dragon in comparison to his, I believe. Yeah, he's only got 90 speed versus 95, but this is where we capitalize. We send our Handmaiden of the Everqueen, uh, Anti-Large, and the Sisters of Avalon as well, and we start popping off on those, but soon off we do swap him onto the Vampire Lord, and we do get Alariel in just a sec, and we do pop, I can't remember what the spell is exactly called, but we've got him right where we want him to, and look at that. Arcane Unforging, that's what we were looking for. So, plus 45 ability recharge, and that'll pretty much slow him down as well, and look at that. Look at the damage popping off from the sisters, the handmaiden, and our sun dragon. So the vampire lord's pretty much just about taken out just then and there. You can see he's he's pretty much uh, crumbling at this stage. Oh, he's actually fading. But our sisters of the ever queen, uh, sisters of Avalon, sorry, are still firing off on the vampire lord. He's getting taken out slowly. The sun dragon's in pursuit. There's no way he's going to be able to take out a full health sun dragon. And here we go. Sun dragon gets the hit on him. And down goes their Vampire Lord, pretty much. He's on 600 health. There's not really anywhere he can go. Uh, Larian Reavers come in and attack the Crypt Horrors, and you can see here he's starting to crumble, and he's going to die. We send the Flamefire Phoenix in to take him out, finish the job, and that is pretty much the Vampire Lord. But now my opponent has started sending in his Dire Wolves. The Black Coach is in the middle of the fray as well. We send the Spearmen after that to take that out. And the Dire Wolves actually get into the back of our Sisters of Avalon. Sisters of Avalon are more than capable of handling these guys even in melee combat. Does shut down their range capabilities and the Loth and Seaguard are also under fire. 
The Vampire Lord Fours, Sun Dragon and the Phoenix are on their way back to reinforce here. But you can see the Black Coach does go down. Enemy Lord is dead. The Dire Pack, the Dire Wolves are pretty much gone now. They are starting to crumble. And with the Sun Dragon causing terror, these guys are going to be pretty much a GG. And you can already see across the map, majority of his forces have taken quite a bit of leadership loss due to his Lord falling and uh, these hex races they're not going to last very long because we've got the phoenix in the mix they're going to get taken out pretty damn quickly as well as that the sun dragon as well which both do magical damage so very bad uh, choice for these guys right here they're going to get in a bit of a trouble we do move our white lines in front of our loth and sea guard so that they can sort of take the brunt of the skeleton warriors and our loth and sea guard can still fire off a lot of uh, interchanging and moving around here, just protecting our main bulk of units. Star of Avalon gets popped off, healing our Sisters of Avalon back up to a decent amount of health. And they are back firing into the rest of the Black Knights. Lothar and Seaguard, we switch them over to melee to intercept these guys and deal the anti-large damage to them. You can see they kind of get through to our Sisters. Not too much of a big problem here. Uh, we do have a group of skeleton warriors coming in here, but they are crumbling, so we're not too worried about them. They are going to get into uh, the Handmaiden of the Everqueen and the Sisters, but our Flamefire's Phoenix over here is just dropping bombs everywhere. And you can see that this single group of spearmen is actually holding back quite a big tide of units. There's four units over there that have been held back by them. He's also got a group of skeleton warriors back there, and the Cryptoras are coming in to try and take on the Sun Dragon. The Banshee is also in here now, trying to deal damage, but once again, not a very good pick for the Banshee because the Sun Dragon does do magical damage. Flamespire Phoenix is coming in to deal with the Banshee as well, and you see that all those skeleton warriors there crumble, and just like that, guys, it is GG's due to army losses. So, well played to my opponent. It was a pretty easy match on our part because my opponent obviously didn't have very many uh, ranged units, so we kind of just had to wait for him to come to us. But the Sun Dragon and overextending his Lord right at the beginning there was really a big downfall for him. But guys, we came out on top. Um, yeah, that was pretty much it. One thing I'd probably in recommend my opponent to do is probably bring more cavalry and uh, intercept the ranged units a little bit faster. You saw that uh, the Dire Wolves and the Hex Race sort of came at after we had killed his lord. So if they came a little bit earlier, that would have been better. But yeah, guys, that's going to wrap up the video today. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I will catch you in the next one.